attending today's ceremony. In my capacity also as the director of the Emergency Medicine Training Center and Clinical Simulations, I am almost certain that I would have had the distinct pleasure of working with many of our familiar faces that will be seen in the audience today. It warms my heart and the hearts of our entire AUA community and family to be with you on this special day. We cannot help but feel a sense of pride seeing each and every one of, of you as well as our graduates. Today is a testament to you, to your hard work and commitment, the medical school and the journey that it has been, it has not been an easy one. Having had the pleasure of working along with our students from their very first moments on the island, meeting as many, or meeting many of them as they would have landed in Antigua and Barbuda is, was truly an honor and a pleasure. Being with them down to their very last basic science exam and appreciating and understanding the importance and the support of their families, that each and one of you, the family members that are here with us today, the journey, it's been a long one, but indeed a joyful one. And that being the case, parents, family members, loved ones, we applaud you as well for being here today because May 26, 2023 is your day too. Commencement is one of the most time-honored traditions in our society, and it is one of the most highly anticipated celebrations at AUA for students, their families, and their friends. But before I begin, I would like to ask a few things of you. Because we want to keep the focus on our graduates, we would ask that, please, if you would turn off your cell phones, set them to vibrate or a mode that would not disturb others. If you have mastered the art of doing the same with your children, we ask you to please do the same. <laughs> but if you could also work very hard to keep them on silent, it would be very much appreciated. We request that all guests remain seated for the entire ceremony. We have professional photographers taking photos of the graduates while they're on stage. Those photographs will be available online. And for this reason, please refrain from using flash photography while the graduates are walking across the stage, and please remain in your seats. You may videotape the ceremony or take photos with the flash off, please. Immediately following the ceremony, there will be a reception that will take place outside the Prudential Center. And now, without any further delay, please rise and welcome our graduating class of 2023. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of 2023. You're asked to please remain standing. Graduates, if you would please face forward. Facing forward for the singing of the Antigua and Barbuda, as well as the United States of America National Anthems. Performing the Antigua and Barbuda National Anthem will be Miss Ray Graham, and performing the United States National Anthem will be Melissa Morrell. Fair Antigua and Barbuda, we thy sons and daughters stand strong and firm in peace or danger to safeguard our native land. We brave and free ever striving ever seeking to well in love and unity So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Thank you. Please be seated. I'm sure our graduates recognize and would have their own stories about the familiar faces that I've seen on the platform with us this afternoon. However, I would like to formally introduce the dignitaries that you're seeing and seated on the platform with us to this afternoon. Dr. Peter Bell, Provost 
and Vice President of Global Medical Education. Congresswoman Sheila Sherfilis McCormick, U.S. Representative for Florida's 20th Congressional District. Dr. Nimrata Chabra, Associate Dean of Academics and Professor. Dr. Peter DeVito, Clinical Science Co-Chair of Surgery. Dr. Carolyn Edmondson, Associate Professor and Assistant Dean of Student Affairs. Dr. Nelda Ephraim, Associate Professor and Director of Clinical Education Enhancement Department. Dr. Shamala Gunnison, Assistant Professor and Acting Chair of ADCO. Dr. David Graham, Executive Dean of Preclinical Sciences. Doc Dr. Matthew Hogan, Dean of Clinical Sciences. Dr. Ricardo Hood, Acting Chair of Clinical Medicine and Professor. Dr. Dwayne Hunt, Senior Associate Dean of Student Affairs. Dr. Teresa Lemma, Clinical Sciences Chair of Pediatrics. Dr. William Lois, Clinical Sciences Co-Chair of Surgery. Dr. Sanjeev Nishal, Clinical Sciences Chair of Family Medicine. Dr. Panka Pankaj Patel, Clinical Sciences Chair of Psychiatry. Dr. John Riggs, Clinical Sciences Chair of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Mr. Neil Simon, President and Co-Founder of AUA. Dr. Jobila C, Associate Dean of Academic Success, Associate Professor and Chair. Dr. Leslie Walwin, Associate Dean, Global Health Track, Senior Advisor and Professor of Clinical Me Medicine. Dr. Mohamed Torabi, our alumni speaker, class of 2017. How would you like to warmly welcome our dignitaries with us this, this afternoon? Our first speaker is president and co-founder of American University of Antigua College of Medicine, Mr. Neil Simon. Mr. Simon's career encompasses many years in medical education and administration. He is the former president of Ross University College of Medicine and Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine. He has been a professor, professor of medical jurisprudence to medical students and residents. Mr. Simon and the founding group of physicians and medical education professionals created AUA with a mission to provide a superior medical education to students committed to the highest standards of learning. Mr. Simon and AUA are committed to graduating skilled, ethical, and caring physicians and are dedicated to breaking down the barriers that have prevented underrepresented minorities from obtaining medical education in the United States and subsequent licensure. Without Neil's vision and determination, many of our advancements could have never been realized. Our graduates, you graduates, are a testament to that commitment and dedication. I ask you now to please welcome Mr. Neil Simon to the podium with a round of applause. Let me begin by welcoming all to this commencement ceremony. Um, I know it's a special occasion for everybody here, the graduates, their families, and all the dignitaries uh, behind me who contributed to the success of all our graduates today. Um, I wanted to start by saying that I had been chosen as the first speaker here tonight, or today, I should say, and I figured this is a great honor, especially since I'm a lawyer and they're all doctors and they chose me to be the first speaker. You know, so I was very proud and held my head up and thought, well, I have to do a lot of research and a lot of work since I'm gonna be the most important speaker or one of the most important speakers and have been honored as being the first speaker. Unfortunately, in doing my research, I found out that in commencement ceremonies, the first speaker is the person who is most likely whose words are to be forgotten and whose talk is the most li least likely to be listened to. So 
I did do a lot of research and I prepared this long speech that um, I was going to give today. Uh, but knowing that you won't remember a thing I say, I decided that it would be in the interest of time, because it would probably take me the whole day to go through this speech, um, that I would just say, congratulations, you have a lot to be proud of to the graduates. And as a school, you are what, what makes us proud. So congratulations and best of luck in your future. Thank you. One, one, one more point. For those of you who are interested in my speech, it will be in the third garbage bin in the, uh, uh, outside the uh, hall here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Our next speaker is Provost and Vice President for Global Medical Education, Dr. Peter Bell. Dr. Bell has served as Assistant Medical Director of the Department of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care Medicine at Ossi Klinik Damp in Germany and has completed numerous national and international rescue missions as an emergency physician of the German Air Rescue. He served as Medical Director of the Caribbean Helicopter Air Ambulance Service and as a Maritime Medicine Consultant. He chaired the Department of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care Medicine at Halberton Hospital in Antigua prior to joining AUA back in 2005. Please join me now in welcoming Dr. Peter Bell to the podium. Thank you very much, Vernon. Congresswoman uh, Sheriff Liz McCormick, President Simon, faculty, administration, family, friends, and most important, graduates, a very warm welcome and good afternoon. Today marks a milestone in your career path. The formal hooding and conveying of your degree symbolize the transition from a medical student to medical doctor. While you wore the short uh, white coat or scrubs during patient encounters in previous semesters, you might not have given it any thought or much thought to its symbolism. In the Western world, the white coat, more so than the stethoscope, has identified the members of our profession and what they stand for. Even so, the days of the white coat seems to be limited, replaced by scrubs or even banned, like in the UK. The white coat, more than ever, is an equivalent for what we stand for and far more than a warning sign, beware of the doctor. <laughs> the white coat symbolizes as I said, what we stand for, medical knowledge, selfless patient care, empathy, integrity, independence. It is on us, it is on you, to ensure that those standards are maintained uh, and that we, medical doctors, remain a trusted source for advice and treatment of our patients. But the trust by our patients in our profession has decreased over the years. At this point in time, and for good reason, nurses are the medical uh, profession patients trust most. In addition, new technologies like uh, ChatGPT have been evaluated and found to provide, and this is really scary, provide not only more accurate information than the average physician, but also, and that is a point, more empathy to the students. Think about that. AI providing more empathy than the members of our profession. Again, it's on you, it's on us, to regain that trust and respect by the community. In a few minutes, we will recite the moder a modern version of the Hippocratic Oath. The mandates for honesty and integrity are vital components of that oath. Please reflect on the role of professionalism in your chosen profession and make sure that you are prepared not only to swear the Hippocratic Oath here at uh, your commencement ceremony, but also to live by the pledge you're making to yourself 
your families and your patients. I wish you all the resilience you need for the times ahead. Residency training will be challenging, it will be fun. Huh? And enjoy wearing the long white coat. Thank you very much, good luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Bell. At this time, we'd like to invite our president back to the podium to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you. As much as I would have liked to give my speech again, um, I think it's much more important that I introduce our keynote speaker tonight. Today, excuse me. Uh, Congresswoman Sheila Shafless McCormick. She was elected to the House of Representatives in January 2022. The Congresswoman became the first Haitian American Democrat to be elected to Congress. She represents Florida's 20th District and serves on the House Committee on Education and Labor, as well as the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. She is also a member of the Congressional Black Caucus the Haitian Caucus, and the Caribbean Caucus. Congresswoman McCormick holds a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Government from Howard University and a Juris Doctorate from St. Thomas University. As a Congresswoman, Congressman McCormick focus is tracking, is tackling, excuse me, the rising unemployment rates, the soaring cost of living, inadequate access to quality health care, and the lack of equitable opportunities. As a Haitian American woman in Congress, representing one of the largest Haitian communities in the United States, she is a voice for her diverse district. Within her district, the Congresswoman has established herself as a health care executive, working up to the position of Chief Executive Officer of the Trinity Healthcare Services, Inc. And within the healthcare industry, she has a track record of improving the quality of care for nearly two decades. Please welcome Congresswoman Shearforth McCormick. Good afternoon, American University of Antigua. It is such a blessing to be here. I wanna say a very special thank you to the President Neil Simon, also the Provost Peter Bell, but most importantly, I wanna say a special thank you for allowing me to be here and to give you the speech on your very special day. To me, this is one of the biggest moments of my life, and it's a blessing. After being the CEO of a healthcare company for 10 years, then daring to go into Congress to try and conquer our healthcare issues, knowing that this graduation today is not just a graduation, but it's actually a destiny moment for everyone who is graduating today. It's actually a moment when you realize your dreams. It's a moment when you take note of all the hardships you've been through, but all the grit and tenacity that brought you to this very important day. This room is full from the top to the bottom of people who are here to celebrate you, who recognize your greatness, who recognize your hard work, who recognize your grit. So to be here and wish you the best as you go forward is truly a blessing for us all. What you will do in the future will not change one person's life, will change families, will change nations, will change everyone who you touch. And with that kind of responsibility, it's important that you get just three messages from me, three points as you embark on this road. And although as we stand here today and we think about this graduation and what we're gonna do afterwards and what we're gonna have for dinner, we won't forget the little things that got you here, the support of your family. So I would love to give a hand to everybody who's here and to recognize all your family members. As a mother of two teenagers, well, they're 19 and 20, we know what we go through to raise our children. We know what we go through to actually push our children for forward. As a wife, we know what we go to make sure that our families are there. And I know everyone here has done a great job with you because I can see your faces. 
I can see the joy, the pride, the love that you have inside of you. So I know you were nurtured on good ground. In, in addition to that, you were nurtured with an excellent school that saw the potential in you and knew that you would be sitting here today on this stage of graduation, who knew that you would answer the call to be great in medicine and be here today. So I can't thank enough the wise people who admitted you and who are sitting behind me, who have taught you, who I've poured into to make sure that you're perfect also on this day and that you achieve all of your dreams. So thank you to everyone who's here and who contributed to their education. Now back to my speech. I have my team here and they're probably looking, you know, Congresswoman, you speak too much, you speak too long, but this is a place that I never thought I would be. The reason is I went, you know, I, I'm the first generation Haitian. My parents came from Haiti fleeing a dictator. Thank you, we have Haitians here. Sac passe. So when they first came here, they said, you have to be a lawyer or a doctor, that's it. You know, that's the only options we had. And I was the rebellious one. I said, I'm gonna be a lawyer. I didn't wanna be a doctor. But they would be so happy if you guys were their children at this point. So I went down the path that they tell us we can go. And as I was going through the path, people said, you know, Sheila, you should run for Congress. I said, you know, I'm an attorney. I do healthcare law. I don't really know anything about this road called Congress. But I looked at the faces of the community, just like I look at you guys. I saw the diversity, but more I saw people who went through what I went through. People who struggled like I did, who took a lot to believe in themselves to say that we can make it here. And I said, you know what, we have a story to tell and we need to tell it in Congress. And so I took that shot. And that's my first point to tell everybody here. This is one of the biggest steps that you've ever made in your life, but be open to change. You will go forth and you will perfect your craft. You will go into residency and you will come out. And when you come out, you might be called. You might be called to be one of the best surgeons. You might be called to lead a hospital. You might be called to be a, a member of Congress. You might even be called to be a professor. You might be called to be president one day. Answer that call. No matter how scary it is, no matter how intimidating it is, remember this moment when you actually got to graduation. You succeeded once. You've overcame once, you can do this. So wherever you're called to go to, answer that call. Say yes to challenges. Say yes to being better. Say yes to being the person who you were called to be. And it may not be clear today, but when that moment comes, say yes. My second point to leave with you is to say yes to challenges. Now, changes are some things that come, challenges come, but when your whole trajectory starts to change and you have to grow and protect yourself, perfect yourself, say yes to that. I know it may seem like it's two and the same, right? A challenge, but a change is a little bit different than a challenge. You'll see challenges, I'm sure you've seen it in medical school. I'm sure you've seen challenges during COVID. That was a change and a challenge. But what it really did ultimately was change our trajectory. You guys are called to change the trajectory of medicine. Right now, we're in a pivotal moment where we're looking to see medicine served with the cultural competency. We're ensuring that diversity is actually in medicine. So when you're treating your patients, you can understand and empathize with your patients on a level we've never actually prioritized before because you understand their culture, you understand their background, and when you look in their eyes, you see their humanity. You see your mother, your father, your daughter, your uncle, you see us. And that's what changes medicine, where we start becoming more humanized. But everyone in there, in here has that skill. That's why we'll never be replaced by AI, because we're humans. We feel, we have a heartbeat. This is an emotional day, remember that. When you go in and you have a hard day, when your patients don't make it and you have to look at their families, when your patients do make it and you look at their families, when you have to diagnose them, remember the humanity that you have. Remember the humanity that brought you here. This takes me to my last point. Always remember to extend grace to yourselves. You won't be perfect all the time. You'll miss the mark a lot of the times. And some of the times it's gonna be, when you miss that mark, it's gonna be hard. Because we know when we miss marks here, it's about, it might be life or death. Forgive yourself, Ex exert grace. Understand that everybody goes through a process. You'll grow in that, in that space. As doctors, you're gonna lead the space that you're in. 
Extend grace to everyone who works beneath you and who works with you. Extend grace to the people who work above you. But most of all, extend grace to yourself and to your family. As you're transitioning, as you're moving, there'll be hard days and sometimes no one would ever understand what you're going through. And someone might say something to you that doesn't sit well with you. Give them the grace that you would ask for yourself. And as you move forward, you'll have children and you'll have spouses and you'll have parents that you're not there for because this job is demanding. Have grace for yourself at that moment. And remember that this is a calling, a special calling, a calling that changes the entire world. And you guys have been called to it. With that, I would like to tell you, congratulations. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today and to speak life into you. And I can see everyone's face in here. And I, there'll be a day when we'll see you again. And I would love for you to tell me how you answered that call to greatness. Hopefully I'll see you guys walk in the halls of Congress. Maybe I'll see you throughout the whole world one day leading. Somebody might be the Surgeon General. Somebody might just be leading another college or medical school. But I see everyone's faces. And so if I get to see you outside, I'm gonna say, hey, I remember you, I'm very good faces. Did you answer that call? And if you don't answer that call, remember there might be another opportunity. Answer that call and be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congresswoman, for truly echoing the sentiments, I must say, of the entire AUA community. Say yes, guys. And now I'm pleased to introduce this year's valedictorian, Kaylee Coffey. <laughs> Dr. Coffey obtained her Bachelor of Science in Biology at Western Kentucky University. Additionally, she volunteered as an educator, counselor, and medical assistant for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, while also working as a student researcher studying acute sleep fragmentation and stress physiology in rodents. Dr. Coffey joined AUA in February of 2018. As a medical student, she was an active member of Phi Delta Epsilon International Medical Fraternity and served as an independent tutor to her classmates. And after graduation, she will be starting her residency in general surgery at Western Reserve Health this July. Welcome, Dr. Coffey. Good afternoon. Let me begin by saying that I am humbled and honored to speak before you today and would like to thank all our loved ones and faculty who supported us on this path to medicine, believed in our dreams, encouraged us when we faced setbacks, and celebrated our wins. We are formed by a unique background and set of perspectives which brings us together and stands out to me as an overarching and unifying theme within our class. It, our resilient nature, which is a topic of my speak, speech today. Resilience refers to both the process and the outcome of successfully adapting to challenging life experiences. And it is difficult to empathize just how essential resilience is to medicine. From the time we first became medical students until we retire as physicians, the inherent unpredictability of the profession demands that doctors be adaptable and persistent in the face of cir circumstances that would preclude both of these traits. If we haven't already, we will encounter difficult spaces in which stepping back would be far easier than forging ahead. We have all felt the exhaustion, inadequacy, and defeat as we have faced countless obstacles and made innumerable, innumerable sacrifices throughout this journey. Over and over, I and my fellow trainees endure failure. And while failure is certainly part of the learning process, it also comes with a steep emotional burden. Without resilience, we would be unable to shoulder that burden as resilience does not grow from playing it safe or from easy success. It evolves from risk, struggle, and failure, the place where we often learn the most about ourselves in our inherent drive to persevere. While deliberately seeking struggle and failure is not advised, seeking pursuits that do not guarantee success and that require you to move beyond your comfort zone is. Resilience is further fostered by learning to sit with uncertainty, which by now 
we have all grown accustomed to as we took the risk to attend medical school in a foreign country and endured a global pandemic with constantly changing regulations and schedules, amongst other challenges, we became comfortable with being uncomfortable, which will prove to be a valuable skill as we progress throughout residency and our careers. Finally, I want to acknowledge the immense responsibility and power that comes with being a physician. We have been entrusted with the care of some of the most vulnerable members of society, and we must never take that responsibility lightly. We must think critically, act with empathy, and prioritize the well-being of our patients above all else. Let us always strive to be the best versions of ourselves, to act with integrity and compassion, and to never lose sight of the privilege it is to be a healer. I look forward to seeing how our resilient nature will lay the foundation for further successes. Congratulations, class of 2023. We accomplished something truly remarkable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaufman. Now, it seems as if your class has put together a video presentation for us. Please, turn your attention to the monitors for the presentation. Feels good reflecting back on that, doesn't it? 
At this time, I'd like to introduce our alumni speaker, Dr. Mohamed Turabi from AUA's class of 2017. Dr. Turabi will be completing his general surgery residency in June of 2023 at Michigan State University, where he also serves as the administrative chief. Dr. Turabi is a highly skilled surgeon who is strongly committed to his field and is a well-respected member of the medical community. Dr. Turabi is also an accomplished researcher who has published several papers in respected academic journals and has presented numerous posters at regional conferences. Now let's welcome and turn our attention to Dr. Turabi this afternoon. Good afternoon, graduates. Or I should better say, uh, doctors. It's an honor to be here with you today uh, as we celebrate uh, your incredible achievement. As a surgeon and alumnus of American University of Antigua College of Medicine, I know firsthand the hard work and dedication that it takes to become a physician. You've all put in countless hours of studying, taken countless exams, and dedicated a lot of work. And but today is the day that all that hard work has finally paid off. So, you're now officially doctors, and there's something to be really proud of. But as you embark on this new chapter in your lives, I want to encourage you to find your passion and purpose in medicine. Medicine is not just a job, it's a calling. It's a chance to make a difference in people's lives, to ease their pain and suffering, and to bring them hope. I still remember the moment when I realized that surgery was my calling. It wasn't until recently that I was called to respond to the tragic event that occurred at Michigan State University on February 13th. That date will always stick with me. As I rushed to the hospital that night and passed through the police barricades on Michigan Avenue, I, remain, I remained completely focused despite the fact that the city was under a lockdown with the shooters still at large. While in the operating room, I realized that all the training and skills that I had acquired in the last six years of residency was just coming together in a calm and very controlled manner. Don't get me wrong, my adrenal glands were hyper-functioning that night, <laughs> and the feeling was something that I had never experienced in my life. It was then that I realized that I found my true purpose in medicine, more specifically trauma surgery. But your purpose may be different. Maybe you're passionate about public health or research or neurology. Whatever it is, hold on to it. Remember why you decided to become a doctor at the first place and let that guide you in your career. The future of medicine is bright, but it's also very challenging. We're facing new diseases, new technologies, and new social and ethical issues. But I'm confident that you're up to the task. You're now the next generation of healthcare professionals and you have the powerful power to change the future of medicine. So I challenge you to be leaders and innovators of the future. Don't be afraid to think outside the box, to take risks and to push the boundaries of what's possible. And always remember that you're part of a community of healthcare professionals who are dedicated in improving people's lives. So in closing, let me congratulate you on this amazing accomplishment again. You're now part of select individuals who have the privilege to call themselves doctors. I'm eager to see what you will achieve in the coming years. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed, for sharing your experience with us as well. We were privileged to hear from Mr. Simon earlier. However, I would like to invite Mr. Simon forward now to begin what you've been waiting for, the degree conferral. Uh, before you stand, I'm gonna ask one more thing. You know, we have a beautiful campus and we have the most modern facilities, but the people who are most responsible for teaching you the required coursework and lessons to become MDs are in part the people sitting here behind me, the faculty, 
and many of the faculty who can't be here today. And I think they deserve a special round of applause for all the help they've given. So please. Okay. Now, <clears throat> graduates of the 2023 class, please stand. Distinguished members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2023 who have satisfied all of the requirements for the Doctor of Medicine degree according to the curriculum and guidelines of the American University of Antigua College of Medicine. Graduates, you may now approach the stage slowly. <laughs> Dr. Kaylee Coffey. Dr. Mintesanot Achemiele. Dr. Aditya Satish. Dr. Koku Ahama. Dr. Danny Ati. Dr. Linda Akbarshahi. Dr. Dalia Al Afifi. Dr. Patricia Alexander. Dr. Brandon Allen. Dr. Shaveen Amarsinghe. Dr. Atinuke Amo. Dr. Nicole Andro. Dr. Kojo Frimpong Awa. Dr. Mobasara Bagum. Dr. Emmeline Bero. Dr. Umesh Batura.
Dr. Karima Best. Dr. Semhal Bayan. Dr. Ashley Biozzi. Dr. Brian Blanchard. Dr. Mackenzie Breadbenner. Dr. Carolyn Buckerty. Dr. Brianne Carlson. Dr. Nicolette Celia. Dr. Sophia Sestero. Dr. Johan Chabanon. Dr. Marley Chowdhury Pitts. Dr. Marnell Sherry. Dr. Shante Chavans. Dr. Veronica Dunkwa. Dr. Karina Dargan. Dr. Matthew Darrow. Dr. Cloudville Derby. Dr. Carlos Diego. Dr. Rachel Donaldson. Dr. Farianji Dorsey. Dr. Carolyn Dudko. Dr. Faisayo Adelere. Dr. Delara Essen. Dr. Stephanie Estevez. Dr. Jaron Frett. <laughs> Dr. Sandresh Brimpong. Dr. Jacob Gitanos. Dr. Alexis Garcia. Dr. Rohan Jord. Dr. Parbinder Gill. Dr. Iris Gonzalez. Dr. Nicole Gaussi.
Dr. Roche Graham. Dr. Milan Griffith. Dr. Karina Habit. Dr. Hint Hanna. Dr. Haley Harrison. Dr. Edward Hernandez. Dr. Valentine Igilim Balbazi. Dr. Chirubem Ike. Dr. Ogochukwu Ilobi. Dr. Justin Itira. Dr. Sagata Iyaturai. Dr. Yujin Zhang. Dr. Joseph Jolly. Dr. Jennifer Jones. Dr. Janae Joseph. Dr. Jake Judd. Dr. Noor Judge. Dr. Sandra Kamel. Dr. Nermeen Kandil. Dr. Nassim Kashani. Dr. Manjot Kaur. Dr. Jacob Kelly. Dr. Sana Khan. Dr. Danielle King. Dr. Kamaswara Rao Kotopali. Dr. Vitura Kunarathnam. Dr. Spurthy Lawson. Dr. Shanda League. Dr. Marlena Lesnowski. Dr. Ilana Lodvinsky. Dr. William Lopez, Jr.
Dr. Erica Lubnow. Dr. Innocent Lutaya. Dr. Bhavya Sri Malkar. Dr. Catherine Marco. Dr. Andrula Marcus. Dr. Lexine Marquez. Dr. Fia Martinez. Dr. Sheree McGann. Dr. Joshua Medina de Jesus. Dr. Joseph Mitchell. Dr. Mia Monk. Dr. Lawrence Makona. Dr. Rolanda Mulume. Dr. Sweti Mutana. Dr. Kartika Nahir. Yeah. Dr. Lynette Nalbadanya. Yeah. Dr. Priya Prince Nachikat. Dr. Mushkan Nasiri. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Negash. <laughs> Dr. Roma Nupani. Dr. Kim Nguyen. Dr. Dung Nguyen. Dr. Sarah Nickel. Dr. Christopher Nunez. Dr. Abigail Nsenga. Dr. Oluchuku Nwachuku.
Dr. Precious Nwoko. Dr. Mary Oko. Dr. Izuchukwu Okonkwo. Dr. Gloria Okpa. Dr. Jatia Oliva. Dr. Merv Mootlas. Dr. Solani Patel. Dr. Albury Pala. Dr. Lisa Prasad. Dr. Michael Petrukovic. <laughs> Dr. D'Angelo Pitts. Dr. Carlos Preciado Ruiz. Dr. Justina Quenu Aqua. Dr. Andrea Quintero Reyes. Dr. Alejandra Ramos. Dr. Aisha Rana. Dr. Sobiga Rachitan. Dr. Coriante Rogers. Dr. Yevgeny Rubin. Dr. Fred Rudensky. Dr. Brittany Salmon. Dr. Jorge Samanamud. Dr. John Shivan IV. Dr. Dario Serra. Dr. Marina Shahata. <laughs> Dr. Oladipo Sotan. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Christopher Siloij Singh. Dr. Bailey Sperry. Dr. Roger Stewart. Dr. Esteban Tapias. Dr. Kendamil Taveras. Dr. Luke Taylor. Dr. Jesse Gabriel Texan. Dr. Asia Thomas. Dr. Atia Tid Johnson. Dr. Mrityunje Tomar. Dr. Carolyn Tran. Dr. Ann Ugabi. Dr. Talma Wigar. Dr. Adam Willey. Dr. Darren Williams. Dr. Dixia Yadaf. And Dr. Zahra Youssef. Congratulations. Class of 2023, class of 2023. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
upon recommendation of the faculty of the School of Medicine and the provost, and by virtue of the power and authority vested in me, I attest that you have earned all the rights, privileges, and powers of graduates from American University of Antigua College of Medicine. You may now move your tassels from right to the left. Those of you who have already moved it to the left can should we remain, have it remain there. Um, I now at this time would like to invite Dr. Peter Bell to put to the podium so he could administer the Hippocratic Oath. Dr. Bell? Before we let Dr. Bell speak, graduates, if you would please remain standing face forward. It has been a long-standing tradition for doctors, particularly new graduates entering this noble and revered profession, to recite the Hippocratic Oath as a pledge to uphold and honor the high moral responsibility and dedication to this profession. As such, we will ask the new graduates to recite with us and with Dr. Bell the Hippocratic Oath, which is printed in the last page of your program, as well as on screen overhead. Any physicians that may be in the audience with us this afternoon who may wish to recite the oath with the graduates, please stand and do so. Dr. Bell. Wow, that is a very, very important moment. It's not only to really formalize your entry in our profession, but also to, as I alluded to before, think about what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> so this version is a modern version which has been approved by the various societies. It's being renewed every 10, 12 years to make sure it still stands the test of time. Because from the original Hippocratic oaths, like I won't cut, uh, nothing much has been left standing. <laughs> so please <coughs> follow my lead here and I need my reading glasses, I hope you don't. Huh? As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit consideration of age disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confined in me even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in, according, and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble tradition of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I 
I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of healthcare. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standards. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you very much. You're really now members of our profession. Congratulations. Graduates, as Dr. Bell just mentioned, you could have, there are many paths that you could have chosen, but you chose a truly noble path, one that allows others to entrust you with their lives, one in which you have devoted your life to the care and the healing of others. And for that, each and every one of you is to be commended. And as you leave today and continue your journey, you will likely reflect on the past years of medical school, your hard work, your family's love and support through all of this, the highs and the lows. It is all contained within moments in our history, some of which we will likely never forget. But now, as we conclude this momentous event, please turn to your loved ones, turn to your families, turn to your friends that are here with you. Soak in this moment. Focus on this moment, for it's in this moment you called yourselves doctors. Congratulations, class of 2023. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this afternoon's event. I would ask that all guests remain seated until the stage dignitaries and graduates have exited the auditorium and until after they are finished taking their group photos. Graduates, please proceed to the front lawn of the New Jersey Performing Arts Center for your group photo. Following the photo, guests may proceed out the stage left, aisle of the theater for a reception in honor of our graduates today. This concludes our formal program and commencement of today's ceremony. Thank you so very much.